Perfect, and we are recording. So welcome in the first governance pod education session. Uh, this uh, education sessions should be every week. Uh, the first one will be very basic. Uh, we will really start with like governance process and what what are the steps in it. So we are kind of on the same page. Everyone is familiar. For some of you who are more involved in governance already, it might be a little bit, you know, redundant or too basic, but we want to make sure that, you know, we are starting from the fundamentals. And then the next sessions will be more specific to different DAOs. So we have already done some research on DAOs like MakerDAO, ElementDAO, uh, and LM and Finance, uh, Index Group, and others. So we will be presenting every week different DAO and what's their kind of governance model, what are the pros and cons of their model, what they might have some like innovative models within it and what might be something what they need to improve on as, as we might identify some gaps there. So that should be basically from next week. Is there any question so far for the purpose of this education sessions? All clear? All Perfect. Clear. So let's. Uh, when you tell me, sorry, just one second. Punker, you have to, can you say change slide when it's time to change slide? Okay. Right. I, I will. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, themes, feel free to jump in. Uh, you know, we work together on basically the material for, for the session. So feel free to just add to it. And anyone, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to interrupt me anytime. We can ask, uh, answer that question and then continue. Uh, so change slide, please. So what was the was governance? Uh, and something is on the slide. I might say even more basic. It's basic to. How to do decision making. And we don't have to overcomplicate stuff. It's uh, really simple as agreeing on what we will be doing. And for that, if it's very simple decision, we might agree just between two people or something like that. We don't need really like formal process, but there are some unspoken rules in that. But if we are creating DAO, uh, which is you know, larger, there are multiple stakeholders involved, then we are getting into um, into things where we need process in place to make sure that our decision making is inclusive. Uh, because there, that's like one of the biggest problems at the DAOs uh, currently is that some groups of people are excluded, maybe not intentionally, but by that process that it's in place are excluded from actual decision making. Reason can be they don't have enough in the community, like enough tokens, uh, therefore they cannot really like influence any decision or if there is some other uh, voting mechanism, it can be that like the majority is voting for something and there is overall so and that's what we are trying to solve with governance and how we can improve and all the processes in few words uh what, what's the process what are the steps in the process so everything starts with ideation so first we need to come up with idea what actually we want to decide on and ideation process doesn't need to be that every single ideation and like to move forward so like we have many ideas, we never made it further or it's the right time and so on and so forth. So we might not be in progress with them. But if that idea found some support, it feels like it's the right fit, then we are getting into proposal stage. That's very like formalizing the idea and making sure that there is some plan how to execute on it. When this uh, idea is formalized it's in the proposal stage, we submit it to the community for discussion and that's 
the difference between ideation and discussion is that within ideation there is not clear format there is not clear scope there it's more more kind of everyone has their own kind of view on it but in the discussion phase there is the proposal in place and we are commenting on that proposal and adding to it and that's basically what is usually happening at the forums and so on and then after it uh there is voting uh which should like kind of solidify the disc the outcome of the discussion and after that that's uh execution which means like if the proposal pass we are getting into executing the proposal so that's like the basic five steps and on the next slide but don't switch just yet uh we will be going into more details of of this uh steps kind of the overview what it's going on there what are the best practices and what might be some risks uh which we want to be mindful of so let me pause here if there is anyone like who would like to kind of have any questions to it or maybe want to add something Um, I just want to add that this current processes that you see ideation proposal discussion voting and execution isn't necessarily the best process, but it is the one that is used most frequently within DAO. Um, and so what we'll really actually be doing as well is like breaking down each process. And I think that that's also when Punkar was talking about inclusiveness is that um, when joining a DAO or participating within DAO governance we're not really given an opportunity to learn about each section. So that's also another objective within this education series. Thank you, Fims. Next slide, please. Perfect. So we are starting with the ideation phase. And I already mentioned that it's basically where everything is starting. First, we need to come up with the idea to be able to actually make some decision on it. Um, and I think the culture of the DAO is very important in this phase. So what we are trying to basically incentivize to make sure the ideation is happening uh, is cooperation within the DAO. Because if we are working in silos, they, there won't be that many ideas happening as people are not you know exchanging kind of thoughts and so on which supports the idea generation also what is really important here is it needs to be following the same vision so to idea be executed successfully we need to make sure that everyone is kind of on the same page and then the idea of what it's kind of created by the contributors are is connected to our goals and we know so that's something what needs to be embedded in the culture of the DAO. it's like we are here for the same purpose we are here to cooperate and we are here to make make stuff better and that's basically where the ideation process starts now there are many techniques how how we can incentivize that we don't have time here to go through it, but you know, uh, Japanese companies are very famous of having different processes, how to incentivize innovation and ideation. So that's something if you want to take a look, uh, very interesting uh, to see uh, how they basically transform over time. Uh, I already touched upon a little bit on the recommendations. So it's really like, have the clear vision and following uh, the same path. And then it it enables from idea to go into proposal stage and to actually get all the way to execution. Because if the idea is not following the same path as the DAO, it would be very hard to get it approved and start actually working on it. Because there, the other contributors won't see uh, the, the value in it most probably and the third point which is there is uh incentivization so i think it's also good if the dao itself enable people to work on the ideas and incentivize some outcomes uh i like 
uh, rather retrospective incentivization than like upfront, because I think that make that kind of making sure that we are incentivizing the outcome, not just the process, but it's just my kind of personal view on that. Because like people generally would like to work on something which will be appreciated and then the appreciation will be also rewarded. So that's something what uh, we need to have here. And what are the risks of, uh, let's say the ideation process and what we need to avoid is ideation process needs to end. It needs to either go to the proposal stage or uh, it needs to be kind of stopped and like say, okay, this doesn't make sense now, let's revisit later. Sometimes it's like people are going in the circles, uh, spending too much time on the same idea, which will never be actually executed or pushed forward, which means that they are spending their time in no valuable uh, manner. So there needs to be always kind of some balance between like if the idea they are actually progressing or we should pause on it and and move on. Uh, and I think that's uh, like one of the biggest problem. The second one is, is it mentioned there? It's hard to tackle, I would say, but you know, million dollar idea, it's not in the idea, it's in the execution. So if you are not executing those ideas, if you are pushing ideas basically like off the table, not that we don't want to do it, we don't want to spend time and money on it, we, mu we might risk that that idea actually would move our business forward. And that will be actually the groundbreaking idea for our business. So there's also important to like, see what can actually bring some value to the community and not just saying no, but sometimes we need to experiment and we need to risk. So that's kind of the ideation process and how it should be supported within the DAO. You know, it's happening a lot on Discord. It's happening a little bit on forums as well. Uh, but I, I, I would say that it, from my experience, it, it was happening more in like real life, but we were still going to the office because people have idea all the time and like, just like close ourselves in the room and I did, uh, was very valuable, but we need to work, uh, what we have in our disposal. So. We need to work through the noise on the Discord and try to execute on that as well. So let me pause here if there's any question or uh, someone would like to add something to it. Yeah, not, can... not really a question, but one of the things that keeps uh, popping up in my head is how in the house all ideation slash discussion happens asynchronously. Uh, that makes sense because these are internative uh, organizations, but also I can't stop thinking about what we're missing for not having discussion in a synchronous way, like the real parliament's work. Um, so yeah, I'm just following a couple of tools that let you allow you to have forum-like discussions with uh, real-life discussions um, in video calls just to complement. But yeah, yeah, just a thought. Not really a question. <laughs> no, I think it's a good thought. And I, I think asynchronous, async this kind of ideation, it's hard because a lot of things is lost. Uh, just, you know, uh, if you have just like a uh, written communication, there is like 90% of the information is basically lost. So I agree, we need to improve on that. And if, if you have any like tools in mind, it would be great to kind of try to explore and maybe experiment a little bit with it, how we can actually get better uh, in this process. Just in, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just in regards to clarity, um, when we talk about ideation, it's also referred to as temp check. Um, so this is really just an opportunity for you to see whether or not the idea that you're planning to a submit a proposal for is actually has the sentiment of the community, but also it provides an opportunity for people to kind of 
take it apart. Um, so when you're looking at something in terms of ideation, I think a, a good strategy would be like, how would this benefit the DAO? Because when you do submit it within a proposal, you will be having uh, people question it and maybe taking it apart. So it's better for you to, to uh, be prepared for that. But also when you're thinking about an idea that you feel that would be good for the DAO, think about cost and think about implementation as Pankar um, had mentioned, how many people will this actually take to um, complete? And can the person who is submitting the idea fulfill this project from start to end? Um, because if it's something that you have a good idea about, but you don't necessarily want to execute it, it might just be a waste of everybody's time. Yeah, great addition. Thank you, Themes. So let's go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, so when the idea uh, what we would be discussed, not every idea will make it uh, make it to the proposal stage, but when the idea gets the right same check and like we feel that it's like well supported by other contributors, we will try to solidify kind of and uh, this idea and really put it in writing also with uh, all the kind of execution plans and how we are trying to approach the idea to make sure that uh, it will get done. Uh, and there can be multiple types of proposals uh, in the way what we are trying to actually execute. Uh, you know, some, some proposals it doesn't need to come per se from the ideation, but it can be like bu budget proposals. So, so we are creating the budget uh, for, let's say, our back office, and we need funding for next month or next quarter, next season. So that's something what we will do as a as a proposal, and then community can discuss on it. We are submitting also proposals for changes in our governance structure. That's something what we have in BC as well. Uh, basically, in any change, the governance process needs to go through a uh, formal proposal. And many DAOs executing even other stuff, which we might not do through proposals, but like new partnerships, like basically to approve the partnership with other, other DAO or approve and maybe do some token swap to it. Or if there will be some new service provider to the DAO, it might go also through kind of the official proposal route. So there is many proposals and like depends on the DAO. Some DAOs are running everything through the proposals. Some DAOs are more like having delegated responsibilities. Therefore, some of the decision can be made without the proposal. And what is really important for for that, and especially if there is like a lot of proposal, is standardization. So what we can see in many DAOs is that they do not have any standards. Every proposal is different. There is sometimes too much information, sometimes too little. Uh, they don't really have uh, covered uh, the right aspects. It's hard to read through because sometimes it starts maybe with like what they are asking for, like money. So sometimes it starts with just the story behind all this. And it's it's just hard to navigate and people usually don't have really time to figure out uh, all this stuff. So standardization is super important to be to be very efficient. And it's also enabled to be a rather concise. So if some information is not required or it's like has been proved that that information might not be necessary, the template can kind of guide the proposal writer to it to make sure that like we have the important consideration uh, within that. And another part kind of of standardization is like those proposals needs to be transparent. They need to be basically put on some place where every contributor can see it, can expect that, you know, some uh, like maybe also timing, like some DAOs have like 
every Friday there will be executive proposal or every you know other other Monday something like that and it will be always in one channel it will be always there so they don't need to kind of monitor those forums which is sometimes very hard and you know I know that uh, there are a few like working in some meta governance stuff so if you need to be on multiple uh, kind of DAOs it's really not easy to navigate through it so so we recommend also there is uh, have one standard play maybe standard time where you actually submit the proposals and what what is the risk I already touched upon that it's basically that it will be messy the proposal there won't be either enough information or the necessary information won't be there or they are consistent so it means like every proposal is different it just takes too much time to read through it figure out the structure and everything and kind of the last one is and it's still related to the same problem that if something like that happens like there won't be engagement and that proposal just won't get executed because people won't understand it or they don't want to really spend their time on it and yeah the last one is uh if the proposal requires some specific knowledge there needs to be some kind of upfront either education about it or that that proposal needs to be submitted just to that specific group which can actually have some opinion on it so let me pause here again and if there is any question comments uh to the proposal stage has anybody had any blockers in completing a proposal or wanting to complete a proposal but found it too overwhelming too no questions uh one of the common blockers that I find or had found in the past is the lack of a proposal format. And now that's a common practice, uh, which makes me really happy to see in like every new organization that I join. But yeah, lacking some how to guides or proposal formats, it's a blocker for people who's not um, used to participate in governance. I think with the templatization is that um, I would like to see much more required fields, like automated required fields. So people know that these are the areas that they would need to complete in order for a proposal to be discussed in a positive light. Because what I've also found is that people are submitting proposals that might not meet the necessary requirements and then they get discouraged from doing it again. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, the, the, and, and it's not that hard to create the template and uh, some tools like this course actually enables whenever you want to post something that it will be, uh, the template will be kind of showed to you and you just need to fill it in. So I think this is something like low hanging fruit for every DAO, they are just not doing it. Besides, uh, go on. Hey, this is D side. Um, I'm kind of stepping in late to this this call. Um, but I just want to make sure, and 3D Hippie has been working on exactly this for Bankless Consulting. I think my understanding is you guys are, are kind of putting together a, uh, a templates or, or a package for, uh, for external clients, right? Sorry? Uh, we do have governance as a service, yes. But 3D Hippie is working more on the like office stuff, like gas stuff. Mm -hmm. This is just like a education series for everybody to get keep up to date with what's happening in the governance ecosystem. Within Bankless Consulting? No, within governance is in general. Governance. Like DAO tooling. In all DAOs. Like, yeah, in all DAOs. Like governance is the topic. Okay, got this it. This is governance is the topic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So my point is that 3D Hippie is working on exactly this for bankless consulting oh a proposal template yes is that my understanding yes okay yes, yes. 3d hip you want to talk about it <laughs> the blockers um no no blockers we had quite a productive call last week about it i've um 
I've got a couple of action points after it, and I'll probably uh, I'll probably have that ready for. Well, I can have the draft ready for this week. I was actually gonna. I'm off from Thursday for for, for a week, so I was gonna get it done and have it ready, have the second draft ready for then. What was so, your experience in writing it, though? Like, what were your who were you thinking about completing it? Oh, like yeah, like yeah, that like that's what I kind of know. Oh, sorry. Um, so I already had the basic outline because we'd we'd written some a little framework about it in the in the ratified BC governance doc. So so I had the angle which we had initially approached it from, and then when we had a call last week, we kind of just started hashing out the details in terms of what was written versus what we now think is appropriate because it was written, you know, a few months ago, and we're kind of like essentially reviewing the process and then just kind of adding adding some extra stuff to it. Um, main yeah, thing so just that, like, like, yeah, how much, how much, yeah, how much do you want to go into it, decided? Do you want so, to... Well, just to bring it full circle, um, Punkar uh, did, drafted a good, uh, uh, most of what you are working off of 3D Hippie. So, you know, he, he established the um, processes for presenting a formal and an informal um, proposal. Um, you know, Punkar, if I recall at the time, you and I and, and the rest of the, the representatives kind of said, this may or may not work as it as we're writing it, meaning like we may have to update it. So a few of the a, a few of the the ratified a few a, a little bit of the of the actual document that's been ratified, it mostly works, but there are some components of it that need to be updated a little bit. Regardless, like 3D Hippie is using that as a as a template to make it very easy, basically to write a, a simple playbook and a template for almost anyone to write a proposal, a proposal off of that. No, I think that's perfect. So, no, I think governance should be, you know, evolving all the time uh, yeah. because the needs change. So I totally agree with that. And, you know, what, what we can do here, like just do not be reinventing the wheel within different groups. Uh, you know, we have this governance part at the base camp. I believe 3D if you are in this site, I think you are as well. So if we can just like maybe even post kind of the template there and like ask other contributors for feedback so we can use it within the BC, maybe have some specific within the BC, but also if we will be doing something for our clients externally, we can like kind of work off of it. Yeah, that that's kind of, that's why I brought it up in the first place. That uh, I think that that's a great idea. That you know we shouldn't be doing double work. We we're, we're putting together a template. You know, you guys, we should be working as a team to to establish a standard a, a standard protocol or process for doing that for internal and great. external. Yeah, great, great, great. On these sides. Yeah, Let, let's yeah. let's definitely work agree. as a as a team. And. Now let's move on to the next step. Next slide, please. Uh, and I might a little bit speed up because I need to board the plane, but I believe like uh, you can stay longer and answer any question if needed. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so basically after the proposal is written, so let's say we have a template, we fill out the template, then we submit the proposal. Usually, the best practice is first to the forum uh, where some discussion can happen before it's actually submitted uh, to the vote. Uh, not, I don't, I, not everyone is doing the same. Uh, they are submitting uh, immediately for the vote. I don't think it's a good practice because sometimes we work out of the assumptions and those assumptions can be proved wrong. And if we have submitted to the vote, we kind of need to turn the vote down and like basically update the proposal and then go again and again. In this case, like if there is a discussion, it's easier to kind of amend the proposal and basically based on the discussion, really like solidify it. And what, what the discussion should really bring is that understanding of the community, why we are doing it, like what's, what's the benefit for now and kind of get the support of the community and also the feedback and improve uh, on the proposal. So this is really the, I, I would say one of the most important uh, 
maybe the most important part of the process is like now we are communicating everything to the community we are gathering the broad feedback we are solidifying our thinking and we are making sure that the proposal is the best uh, possible stage uh, some some best practices here are like it should be again on the like standardized place so everyone knows where it is so they can participate if they want to different forums can have different structures so it's good to like make clear what's the structure of the forum how people can interact with it how they can comment and so on how they maybe can find just the topics they are interested in and like cut through the through the noise and so on uh it's also good to maybe announce the new proposal in other channels just to make sure that like everyone really uh is aware if they want to be aware it can be email newsletter it can be discord announcement it can be on the weekly calls basically a list of new proposals so the house are doing different things but the purpose is same we, we want to engage the community and to engage the community we need to make sure that everyone is aware and it's kind of connected to the risks because if the proposal is submitted and no, there is no discussion on the forum and some forum are like that I have submitted few proposals where it's like a zero um, replies uh, to it and it's sometimes very common uh, it's not good because there is basically no feedback to me if I have submitted the proposal, if this is something that will be approved by the committee or not. So if I go from there to voting, I have like no idea what are my chances, kind of. And also, this is just my view on it. And I would like to cross check it with someone else's view if this is relevant to the DAO and this is something what the DAO should pursue. So that's something that it's, uh, I would say one of the biggest risks, like the low engagement. And uh, the other one is if you are working at silos and those decisions might be happening in silos as well, there might be some complete questions. And if the culture of cooperation doesn't exist within the DAO, it can just mean that nothing that actually executed because people will just basically fight over whose ideas that was and not really to try to actually execute on the idea together. So that's, I think, like uh, one of the uh, largest risks for the DAO. And we see it too often, actually, uh, within the ecosystem. And that's something where we can hopefully help uh, also to kind of facilitate better discussion, facilitate better governance process. So let me pause here again, if there's any questions or additions. I just want to add in regards to discussion. Um, discussion, like uh, Pankar said, like working in silos doesn't really help. So like anything else, like you really need to market it to the community for those to give you feedback. Because if you're going to assume at the voting stage is where people will have those conversations, that would, be, would most likely be TLDR. People would either vote yes or no and not really fully read the uh, the proposal. And so when they're in the discussion mode of the proposal, that is when people assume that it's the time for them to actually read it and ask questions and go back and forth. So discussion is actually one of the most important phases within the process uh, because it could increase the likely chance of your proposal being passed. Anyone here actually had some proposal which either had like really good discussion on the forum or no engagement at all? And it doesn't need to be forum. It can be also proposed on this, like submitted on Discord uh, or something like that. Anyone has any experience to share? That's fine. That's why we are here. After few education session it will be submitting proposals everywhere uh, so let's move on next slide please voting uh, so from my perspective voting should be just a formalization of the actual process 
there should be no surprises. There should not be any like, you know, trying to like make it or not make it. There, that should be already decided before during the discussion. During the discussion, the the, the community should already agree if that makes sense to submit to the voting. Again, not every never, every case is the same, but I think that will be the best the best practice. And there are various types of voting. And why there are various types and why we are still experimenting with it is we want to make sure that we are as inclusive as possible for that uh, particular issue or topic we want to vote on. And that means like that if we have a topic that some group of people it's involved and will be impacted by that, that group needs to be there and that group needs to be able to actually vote on it, either turn it down or approve it, and all, any other group kind of which are not impacted uh, will be voting on it. So it's kind of we are trying to basically really balance uh, how we can ensure that we really hear the community voice and we hear the people who are actually impacted by those uh, proposals. And some of the examples are here, you probably heard them all like one person, one vote, uh, which is very traditional in, uh, you know, US and other uh, states, but it can be in the DAO as well. Uh, or uh, one token, one vote, that's, I would say, the most common within the, the DAOs. Then there are some more sophisticated one, like quadratic voting and conviction voting, where we are trying to basically flatten a little bit more uh, the, the ownership means that like even if someone will um holds many more tokens they won't have that much more uh voting power or uh, there can be some some types of voting where actually like the support will needs to be kind of built over time and not just like one time thing uh there another it's a type of delegate i will think uh so that's something where like the community decided to actually trust some group of people to be voting on uh, on their behalf. Uh, from my perspective, I'm a big supporter of delegated voting. I think it's one of the most efficient processes uh, and many DAOs are doing different types of delegation uh, and uh, I, we see some results. I also see some problems there. Uh, if that group of people, it's not that well aligned with the with the rest of the community or something, but I think that's like good step forward. And then from like where it's actually happening, there can be the on-chain or off-chain voting. Uh, it's not really type of the voting per se, but it's more like where, it, where it's happening. And uh, based on that, uh, we can, Oh, let, let me just stop there. Uh, and there, there are some uh, recommendations uh, for, for voting. I said delegated voting, I'm a big supporter of it. However, I think it's important to start like with some simple voting. Like when we are starting the DAO, when we are starting an organization, let's not go for quadratic voting on chain with some delegation rules. It will be just too hard to implement many many problems can just uh come up from there so as every DAO is starting with one token one one vote basically i think that's that's a good start it's not it's not great but better than you know implement something but it's too too complicated uh it, which is related to the the other our community needs to know how the voting works to not be confused uh it needs to be well communicated Another good practice is that if the proposal doesn't get at least minimal amount of votes, it should not go through. That's where we are ensuring that like there cannot be some like hidden proposal which was just one vote, but because nobody voted against it, it just went through and it can have uh, some some problems. Also, when there is some attacks, it's making it harder uh, to attack the community if the quorum is higher because then I need more uh, more tokens or 
more of something uh, to actually pass the proposal. And then uh, time limit. Uh, the voting should not be too long, but neither too short. And the, the point is like, if it's too long, it's just like based on time at some point, and uh, we just want to start executing on it. And But it should not be also just like 24 hours or 48 hours. We need to enable people to actually like access it, read through it, if they are maybe flying somewhere, they still can uh, vote and so on and so forth. And what are the major, major risks uh, within uh, a voting? Uh, ex exclusion, basically, that we are excluding some uh, part of the community from uh, actually deciding. Either it can be because some, some uh, part of the community has so many tokens and so many voting power that they basically decide on everything and nobody else has a chance. Also, if that part is not actually the core community, but it's just like, you know, investors, it doesn't care much. It's also a problem because then we are, there is like no engagement basically and no no incentive uh, to actually work for the DAO. And, you know, that's kind of connected to the last one, like of engagement. Like if there is no clear incentive to actually be voting and be able to decide, then people just naturally don't don't even care. So let me pause here again if there are any additions to what I said or questions, comments. Uncle, do you have any examples of how to implement in a technical way one member, one vote or one wallet, one vote? So one member, one vote, it's usually there needs to be some, you know, identification uh, some SSI or something where we basically ensuring that, you know, you cannot just create 10 different wallets. Uh, and what, for example, Gitcoin is doing is they have like various type of identification you can use and you are kind of your profile. So let's say you get 10% for connecting your Twitter account, another 20 by GitHub, another 50 uh, by some decentralized identity uh, tool and so on. So basically they are trying to make it harder. It's not impossible to create two profiles, but it might not be just worth it. It's like you need to build, build it through many steps uh, and then basically they can prove that it's only like one person one vote. Uh, we can do traditional KYC, but it's just like, I would say at the, at the moment, not many DAOs wants to gather those type of data. And that's why it's not Im implemented many times. But I think this, what, uh, for example, Gitcoin is doing and other, which are like decentralized identity tools and some of the social, current social profiles, but maybe multiple, kind of make it much more harder to create multiple profiles, therefore it's pretty safe to use. Does it answer your question? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I'm actually using one of the tool for decentralized identity. I just forgot the name. Uh, I think it's Bright ID. Yes. Yeah, Bright ID is the one. We can we can do bread ID party in Bankos Consulting. Okay, so let's start and then I think I need to board my plane. Execution. So that's basically right after the voting. If the proposal is approved, uh, what's the execution stuff? I think there are two major execution paths. One is manual and one is automatic. Uh, I don't like the off-chain and on-chain like a distinguishment because I don't think it's accurate. Um, but what automatic means and mostly it's on-chain is that the proposal basically get automatically executed without any involvement of any person uh, means if I'm asking for the funds from the treasury for the budget, the funds got automatically distributed to the multisig, which has been in the proposal. Or if there is some onboard on new assets, 
uh, the smart contract get automatically executed. There do, doesn't need to be any action, and and basically right after the vote, uh, everything is happening automatically. There can be some problems with that, definitely. Uh, it's much easier to attack this process because it's hard to. Uh, so in this case, like there can be some proposals which basically get approved through the governance and can withdraw whole treasury. And because there is no a button <laughs> to stop it, like nobody can kind of pull the plug. Uh, basically, they just watch how the proposal gets approved and how the treasury treasury gets dried. So uh, definitely some downside for it, but like in I would say you know Web3 space that's something what we want to mitigate somehow else, but like move forward mostly with those automatic proposals and make sure that like whatever it's kind of as a proposal will get executed as is and there is no like discrepancies between it which can be in the manual proposal. Because that's usually like written proposal, something. And then, you know, that execution depends on the people. And there can be difference between how it's actually written and how it's get executed, uh, which is, you know, one of, one of the, the risks. So there is a lot of trust uh, factor um, involved in this. So there needs to be uh, there needs to be, I would say, the person who is executing the proposal should be well known within the community so people can trust that what is written that the proposal actually gets executed and that if they are paying for some something like services, that those services uh, will be delivered. Uh, there can be combination of both, uh, means that, you know, that can be automatic proposal as, you know, budget from the treasury, let's say. However, the, pro the second part of the proposal is actually what will be delivered for the budget, and that's manual ex execution. Uh, so it's kind of how I would uh, describe the execution recommendation and what, what the risks I, I touch upon. Uh, yeah, so let one, one last thing I just see, uh, it's uh, the timing again. Like, it's hard to ensure execution on very long timelines like if i will submit a proposal that i will do something within next 12 months people will definitely forget what i have actually promised and it will be hard to like kind of check that what everything what has been in the proposal actually has been executed so there either needs to be milestones and kind of checks on the way or the proposal needs to be just for a shorter period of time because it's just naturally very hard uh, to monitor that kind of long-term timelines. So let me pause here if there are any questions or suggestions or comments. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear now. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add something to some risk factors here with the timing. I don't know if you remember earlier this year how the Beans protocol got basically wrecked. And it was because they, in their governance uh, automation system, they allowed participants or actors inside the DAO to submit, vote, and execute proposals on a single block. And that allowed an exploiter to submit a malicious proposal and drain the treasury um, and basically become rich all in a single uh, block. So yeah, one of the best practices is to have some separation between submitting a proposal, voting for it, and most importantly, separating voting the proposal from executing uh, the proposal. There should be like a separation between those two events to avoid this kind of flash loan exploits. Of course, this is just talking about uh, DAOs or protocols that have automation in their uh, governance structure. Yeah, thank you, Sergio, for that addition. I agree. I think it's sometimes like uh, almost philosophical question 
if that's something what it's like a feature or, or a bug. Uh, and, you know, there are different opinions on it. Like if there should be some kind of uh, almost like that someone can intervene and like stop that proposal from being executed or really what we want in Web3. So, but thank you. I agree with you. There. I think there should be something at least like time gap or something so we can overturn the execution as a community. But yeah, uh, this is what we are, I think, still figuring out. Okay, if there are no any more questions or comments, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the initial basic or like fundamental uh, governance process education session. From next week, there will be more, I would say specific sessions. So next week, themes and joking will be presenting MakerDAO governance. So that's something what if you are interested in DeFi or in Maker specifically, uh, please join us. Uh, it will be really fun and very educational. Uh, and then the third week, so two weeks from now, uh, we haven't decided yet. I don't know, Tony, I know that you work at, uh, on the element finance uh, research, if that's something you would like to present uh, or we have there also index and we have other DAOs in the pipeline as well. Thank you, Pankar, for a great presentation today. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, uh, this is great. Thanks, guys. Pankar, I Sounds have a perfect. question. Um, Go on. Is people like allowed to submit uh, like a request to explore a governance system in particular. For example, I'm very interested in learning how Rocket Pool is managing governance. Like, is, is, is that going to be like an option in the future, in the upcoming weeks? Yeah, like uh, a new, f so, uh... Two things like if you are interested to like do your own research and then present it to the group definitely if you would like to suggest like a topic that like we should do the research and present it that might take a little bit longer uh you know because we are mostly at the moment like who is interested in what they do the research and present it but we will be working also with the prime now uh i talked to them two days ago and they would be also presenting some topics on our educational sessions and maybe you know we will have also some combination so if they had already maybe research on that we can just use them and or ask them to present it awesome yeah i'm more interested in maybe doing the research and then presenting the results because i'm also a meta governance delegate for that protocol so okay, I, I, perfect. Either way, so I have to do that research like, when I get back to Buenos Aires. <laughs> okay, so that's definitely the easiest path uh, because you are basically the owner of the task. And as I said, like there is no decided what will be in two weeks uh, topic. So if nobody will be kind of like, we, I can do still like index or something, but it that slot is free at the moment. Awesome. Okay, okay. I'll keep in touch with regards to that. I'll be back in Sounds Buenos good. Aires next week, and I think I have like a full week to prepare that uh, research last session. Let's see how it goes. Sounds perfect. Okay, thank you, Sergio. And thank you everyone for joining this uh, education session number one, and see you next week. Bye. See ya. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.